everyone. I've got some um, soap wrapping, soap packaging to do, so I, I figured I'd bring you along with me um, this time. Since the last video, people like the packaging videos, so we'll do some more packaging. I've got a, a small batch of soap here to get, well it's not that small, but they've got uh, some soaps to get packed up to um, send out to one of my consignment partners uh, this weekend. So I figured I might as well turn the camera on. Um, even though, to be honest, I really didn't feel like filming today. Um, I've been super, super sick for the last little while. Um, it's not the COVID, but <clears throat> I had uh, the second sinus infection I've had in probably six months. And when I get a sinus infection, it takes me out for, well, it's going on three weeks and I'm just starting to feel better now. But the last one I had after like four, I think it was six weeks, I had to go on antibiotics to um, just finally get over it. <clears throat> so it's pretty nasty and there'll probably be a lot of sniffling today. So sorry about that. But it is what it is and I am feeling a little better. <clears throat> we also got <laughs> at the tail end of this sinus infection, um, my wife and I both got a flu of some kind, like on Tuesday. <laughs> That's my cat, Thunder. Um, <clears throat> he's playing with something. Um, <laughs> on Tuesday, I couldn't even get out of bed. I spent most of Tuesday in bed, just like super achy. <clears throat> And I tested for COVID again and was negative. So I'm just tired. I'm ready to not be sick for a while, even though it's it's really hard right now. But I appreciate everyone who is still wearing their masks when they're sick outside because you're really helping those people who don't have the best immune systems like myself from getting constantly sick so I've got a little list of things that I wanted to talk about <laughs> things that I so hopefully I don't forget about things that I wanted to talk about and not just ramble aimlessly. Um, so my uh, mom and brother visited last week, which was, you know, part of the reason for the flu. I think uh, there's no masking on flights anymore and they both flew from different locations. My brother's in Yellowknife and my mom is on Vancouver Island. So it's, it's incredibly likely that they brought something with them and, and, you know, it sucks, but it was really good to see them. We don't get together often, especially as a whole family. Um, you could be either going like one direction or the other, um, let alone out to see my wife's family in Ontario. So we're spread out all over Canada and Canada is too big to just drive around and, and see everybody when you want to. Uh, so anyway, it was really good. We went out for dinner at uh, Chartier, which is one of my favorite restaurants in Beaumont. And uh, just had a really good night. The meal was amazing. I, I'm trying to remember what we had now. I had this sous vide pork chop that was, I mean, life changing. If you've never sous vide a pork chop before, highly recommend it. Just melts in your mouth. And we had this, uh, like, local, like this toast with local ricotta cheese and um, 
bone marrow. Oh my god, like it's just it was just so so good. For dessert we had a espresso uh creme brulee. And I'm not really a fan of the taste of coffee, so I wasn't sure what to expect, but it was just perfectly balanced. Just a hint of the coffee flavor, um, you know, complemented by that burnt sugar taste. So, so good. So good. <clears throat> so if you get a chance to go over to Chartier and, and try out their fall menu, I highly recommend it. That's the really cool thing about the restaurant is that they do a seasonal menu because they're always working with um, local ingredients. And, and I think, you know, it's really responsible. It's really great of them to do that. And everything as a result just tastes <clears throat> phenomenal. Like you can't, you can't beat when you work with local produce like that. And it's a... Uh, it's expensive there, I can't lie. It's not like something we go and do every day, but for a special meal, they like to go and support them because they pay their staff, you know, living wages, which right now for a restaurant is not an easy thing to do. So definitely go out and support them. Not sponsored by Chartier, just really, really, really enjoy their food. <clears throat> so I've got three bars that I'm packing up today. The first one is our winter or snow, snow day, our holiday bar for this year, for 2022. Smells like sweet peppermint candy. And if you watch the making of this one, um, the smell for me was really, really pretty overwhelming, but it's, it's mellowed out quite a bit. It's quite a nice bar now. So I'm excited to see what everyone thinks of this one. I thought today that I'd talk a little bit about um, consignment <clears throat> and um, kind of what it's like to sell your products on consignment or have your products in a shop that offers consignment. So it's, it's pretty popular, at least in my area in, or in Canada, probably in the U.S. as well, for these little boutique shops to open up that want to support local makers. So they'll offer you to come in and sell your, or like display your product and then sell it based on consignment. So they're not buying it wholesale. They're not giving you any money up front. They're only paying you once the product sells. And I mean, just on a business standpoint, from a business standpoint, I prefer wholesale. I like to have the money. I like to be able to reinvest it back in the business um, and, and, you know, replenish the product that I have sent out. Um, but if you're just starting, if you're new, um, Consignment is kind of, it can be a valuable way to get your brand out there, to get your items in shops, to get people to try your products without, you know, necessarily having to have as much product or raw materials and investment to, to make a wholesale order. So it, it it's, I think it's valuable. Everyone can have their own opinion, but I think it's valuable if you're starting out um, for the experience. So you do want to be careful with the consignment partners that you choose um, because, you know, there's no, 
There's no really, there's no regulations around it, right? They can charge whatever a consignment percentage they want. They, they will all have a contract of some kind, or they should. If they don't, just take your stuff and walk out. <laughs> they should all have a contract of some kind that revolves around, you know, the ownership of your goods, the transfer of ownership, and um, some of them make you sign a term for so long, uh, and what have you. And some are just way more professional about it than others. You will, like there's as many different experiences as there are shops out there. And you kind of got to adapt to each situation. Everyone runs their like fee schedule a little bit different. Um, so a lot of the times it's percentage based and and that's it. So either you're paying uh, like a 70-30 split where <clears throat> you, uh, the maker, are taking home the 70% and the storefront is taking home the 30%. Um, or like a 65-35 or a 60-40. Those are the ones that I've seen. 60-40 is creeping in there to where I... I kind of think it's getting too high. Like I, I'd almost prefer wholesale at that point. But again, I hate to use the word exposure because it's not free exposure. Um, I am there is money involved, so but it is exposure. So if at some point the sixty forty doesn't become worth it, then you know you can decide and. and either not renew that contract or or look at doing something else. Um, and then some will charge you a monthly fee or like a rent price based on uh, like the size of space that you're you're taking up. Like that'll be like a shelf or a glass cabinet or, or like a clothing rack, all depending on <clears throat> what kind of stuff you sell. And um, so they'll charge you a base fee, a monthly rent. And then maybe that will be it. And then anything you make over your rent, you get to keep. Or um, anything over your rent is split at a percentage, like I mentioned before, like 70, 30 or what have you. So, there are so many different things out there, and like I said, because it's not regulated, at least in Canada, it could be anything. So you just want to go into it smart, um, ask all your questions, and they should be very upfront and helpful, and then you'll know. Um, if you get bad, if you get bad vibes right off the bat, then don't go there. I've I really enjoy working with all my consignment partners so far. Um, we've got a shop out in Kalmar. Um, we've got one in uh, Spruce Grove now. And this is who I'm packing up the order for today, Magic Makers. Um, and we've got. Uh, one in Devon that we just brought on and I always have all of our cons uh, retail partners both wholesale and consignment um, down in the comments and then there's a special page on uh, my website for them as well especially with making soap um, or Anything that involves scent, I just think it, it's it's so valuable to be able to go in and, and smell the product and see it before you buy it. But yeah, I guess, you know, in the end, I think consignment is worth it, especially if you're just starting out. Um, it's good experience. Just don't get yourself signed into, like a super long contract if you can help it um 
don't commit to making more product than you're capable of. Just be really upfront with them about your capabilities um, and they should be upfront with you. And I would just go for them. A lot of them are juried too, like the owners will um, make a selection based on the type of products that you sell, so they won't be carrying too many of, of one product. So just like when you're vending at a market, it's really important to look for someone who isn't going to bring on an unlimited amount of vendors um, mashing the same thing that, that you sell. The wind is just going crazy today. I don't know if you can hear it rattling around, but um, we live really close to a farmer's field and uh, when the wind comes through, it just sort of howls between the two buildings. Um, it's hard to describe the way that our houses are built. There's like a wind tunnel that goes through our backyard, essentially. Um, it's super, super windy today. It's, it's warm out, so it's almost like a Chinook when we get Chinook winds here. Like, it's always really windy, but it's warm at the same time. Um, you guys get Chinooks where you are. I think it's just a, like a North American thing. Uh, we still haven't had any snow. Um, like Calgary, who is uh, three hours south of us, and they got a big, big dump. That was actually the day that my brother was flying home, and he had to go down to Calgary, which is a silly story in of itself. So, Yellowknife is north. It's a I want to say it's about a three hour trip by plane north of us um, in the Arctic. So usually Edmonton was and is one of the closest major center to uh, Yellowknife. So planes would always go from Yellowknife um, to Edmonton and, and so forth. Um, but because of COVID and, and all those changes with air travel, uh, they have, um, they're not doing direct flights between Yellowknife and Edmonton anymore. So now you have to go from Yellowknife to Calgary, <clears throat> which is three hours past, a three hour drive past, uh, it was south of Edmonton, so you're going way out of the way. And then usually you have a layover there, and then you have to come back up to Edmonton. So it's just absurd. And, um, you know, doesn't make, I don't know if anyone's flown lately, but it's absolutely awful. Like you're paying double or triple the amount for the flight itself. Service is terrible. Uh, it's just, I used to look forward to flying. I love traveling, but now it's just I, like I dread it. <laughs> I don't want to do it anymore. And we're hoping that really works itself out in the next little bit. Uh, so the next one up here is Unicorn Candy. And uh, I'm just taking this one to this shop. So just imagine makers for now. Um, if this one goes over well, I'm going to remake it in a slightly different way because I'm not going to be using the sprinkles on top anymore. But I'm still really happy with this one. I think it's very fun, it's very fancy, very unicorn. It smells amazing. So it's got 
so many fruits in it. Citrus, sweet fruits, apples, berries. Um, and then it's got some really nice florals as a compliment. I just totally messed that one up. It's got some really nice florals. Um, but the fruits are definitely stand out with the florals as a support. Just a very like juicy smell, if that's a thing. But yeah, I really like it. That one's got a little unicorn horn sprinkle on it. And man, they, the sprinkles are so cool. I just wish that they they didn't. Um, they've got like, they like bleed a little bit. I, th I think I'm showing this on a different video, but I'll show it to you again. There's a little bit of bleeding there. And um, like some of the sugar has melted uh, from the water content in the soap. So some of it is a little bit sticky. That's not going to affect your experience in the shower at all. In fact, a little bit of sugar is, is good. It's great for lather. Some soap makers put sugar right into their lye water when they're making the soap because it makes a really nice lather. But I'm just not, I'm not happy with how it ended up. It's not, it's not as nice as I want it to be. So the next time will be better and yeah, hopefully I get to remake it or once they sell out, maybe I'll just remake it anyway with my new idea and see how it turns out because I'm curious if it will turn out. I don't usually make really bright soaps like this, but this shop has a lot of younger and like teenage customers. And I hope that this would be appealing to their age bracket. Um, I am expanding my wholesale catalog as well. And I kind of want to be able to offer shops, you know, like one-stop shopping when it comes to wholesale. If you want some some bright soaps, you can get some bright soaps. If you want some essential oil soaps, you can get some essential oil soaps. And if you want some more natural looking soaps, you can get those too. Normally, if you're developing your brand, you, you really kind of want to hone it in and just make products that are reflective of your brand and your philosophies. All of these bars are made according to my philosophies with ingredients and, and such, but I don't know. This is just me feeling out the market and this is something you will do as a small business owner. There's no, there's no straight answer for what kind of product is the best. In your area, you can guess, but you kind of have to adapt and change. And um, brands will be changing what they do all the time. It's just that usually when we're small, we can't afford to do a huge rebranding re re change. So this is just something that I'm trying out, and we'll see how it goes. I'm still excited and uh, I will have some of these listed on the website as well coming up pretty soon. I haven't decided if I'm going to release them early or um, save them for the Christmas or holiday release. So speaking of which, that is on my it is on my list of things to talk about today. Um, I'm kind of struggling with when to release the holiday release for another reason, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, I don't really like talking or talking about holiday stuff or promoting holiday stuff until after November 11th. Um, so I've decided that this year we're going to do the holiday release on November 18th. That's a Friday. Um, so we'll get all the, the holiday bars up. 
um, well, I shouldn't say all of them. There's one holiday bar, which is Snow Day. Um, and then I have some restocks coming and new ones. So we've got the, maybe the unicorn soap. We've got a mermaid soap. Um, a uh, really nice wildflower soap and our prairie fog, which is our Earl Grey latte soap. So we've got those coming. And I believe that all of that's gonna go live on November 18th. If that changes, I will update it on Instagram. <clears throat> so if you're not following me there, please do come over and follow me on Instagram. Leave a leave a shout on one of my posts or send me a DM and let me know to follow you back if I'm not following you already. So the reason why I'm pushing the um, the date for the release out a little bit is because I have a market coming up on November 13th. So this is the only, so far, only holiday market that I'm signed up for. Um, I've mentioned in previous videos that I'm not a huge, huge fan of markets. They really stress me out. <laughs> But um, I wanted to try to do one this year, so I'm pretty excited to try this one. Uh, this is, it's called the Crescent Moon Curio Mini Market. So Crescent Moon Curio Market does um, bigger two-day markets through the year, uh, but they have recently decided to start doing some mini markets that are just one day at a different location with uh, fewer vendors. So I think altogether there's going to be 30 at this event, which is still a lot. But um, yeah, so I was really excited. I, I wanted to do some of their markets through the year, but by the time I applied, they, they already had enough vendors in my category and I couldn't get in or what have you. That's the other thing, reason I, I really am not fond of doing markets is because they're so competitive, uh, especially in Bath and Body, it seems like. Well, I know not everybody has a Bath and Body business, but it feels like it sometimes, especially when you're trying to get into markets because it's super competitive. Um, I always say that there's a, there is a market, and I'm not just talking like a vending market, but there is a sales market. There are customers out there for everyone, uh, no matter what you make. Just sometimes if you're selling the same sorts of things, it's competitive to get into these vendor markets. Um, unless it's the ones that charge a lot. Um, some, some of these markets are asking like $130 or more for one day market. Um, an eight foot table, not including the table, but an eight foot space for $130. And well, sometimes that can be worth it for a really established market um, in a good location with a guaranteed amount of traffic. It's a lot to ask of a small business to pay that and assume the risk of, of not knowing how the, how the event's gonna go, um, if they're gonna cover their costs. Like to even cover the cost of the table itself, I'd have to sell like 13 bars of soap at least. And that's not accounting for paying myself uh, an hourly wage to be there or any travel costs, um, what have you. So the costs for markets can really add up. And I don't think there's a lot of people that really do make back the true cost of, of the day when you consider your time, because time is 
really valuable. But <laughs> enough, enough negative, like poo pooing on markets. Um, I mean, same as consignment, one of the biggest benefits is that you get to connect with people. You get to see people in real time, they get to experience your products, and you get to see their reactions in real time, which can be priceless. Uh, especially if you're trying to do market research, you, you learn what products they like, because one of the first things a, like a consignment partner or a wholesale client will ask you is, what's your best seller? I struggle with that one because I, I know the one best seller I have is lavender, hands down. And that's a common one for everybody. It's, it's always lavender. If you don't have a lavender in your line, bring in a lavender, whether it's straight lavender or like a citrus lavender or rose lavender or something. Cedar lavender I've seen as well bring in a lavender but as far as what else are my best sellers I just don't have enough sales um, to really be confident in answering that question yet that's just me um, being you know honest and straightforward and I will be uh, straightforward with my with my vendors but I will give them what has sold the best for me historically and I will always be willing to like change products up or switch things out if things aren't going well for their location you know you want to make the best of of the opportunities that you're given but yeah the Crescent Moon Curio Mini Market is going to be uh, from 11 to 5 on November 13th, which I believe is a Saturday. Um, and that's going to be at the Bellevue Community League in Edmonton. If you are free that day, I would be incredibly surprised and incredibly honored uh if you came and saw me that day i I'm surprised i mean like if you saw this on youtube um and and came to see me i i don't think i don't think there's any chance of that happening but if uh if you do come see me or to all the people that will come see me um i'll be incredibly grateful and, and happy to see you and I'm gonna have a lot of really cool stuff with me. Uh, I've got a bunch of new stuff that I am trying so hard to get finished. Uh, candles, man. The struggle with candles is real. Anybody who's tried to make candles has to know this. Just finding the right perfect combination of wax and wick. I've tried probably a dozen more types of combinations of candles or waxes and wicks at this point not even bringing in fragrances and there's always one that just like maybe i'm just seeking too much perfection and i find a really big thing in candle making that's hard to find is what people's candles look like after they've burned down like half or three quarters they'll always show you the candle just as it's lit or freshly poured or after it's you know made and, and set but they won't really show you what the candle looks like burned halfway or three quarters or a quarter left i almost wonder if it's because candles don't look as glamorous when they are getting down that low um i've come to under expect just from my test that there's going to be a certain amount of wax left on the sides of the jar and testing them in jars and what i mean by that is not um a thick amount of wax because you don't want the candle to tunnel down but you have like some little streaks of wax left over that's just i think inevitable that you're gonna have to clean out of the jar after 
it's it's done so I think I'm getting close and I'm going to have I'm gonna put it up there it's the universe now universe I am going to have candles to sell at this crescent moon curio mini market say that three times fast and I am going to have them for the Christmas release as well I just got a coffee scent that I am thrilled with. It's so hard to find a coffee scent that to me doesn't smell like chemicals and this one is the best coffee smell I have ever smelled. My wife loves it as well. I made her smell it because we both love the smell of coffee. Not so much the taste of coffee but the smell of it so we'll probably have one of those candles going constantly. But anyway, I'm super excited for that release, super looking forward to it. Okay, so just got three here that I'm leaving out as display bars. And this will be it. So this was the lavender soap, I forgot to say that, but our oat milk lavender soap. I think she has some of our original French lavender bars to sell through first before these oat milk bars will hit the shelf. But I'm sure if you ask her really nicely for an oat milk bar, um, she'll be able to get one for you if they aren't out. I don't have too much more to go on about really. Um, our new neighbors are building a fence right now, so um, we've got the fences on either side of our property now, which is super exciting for me because I, at the beginning of this year, didn't think we were going to see fences at all. Like I've been wanting to put the fence up since. Um, we moved in here, but uh, because of the pandemic, the price of wood just skyrocketed and be building a fence no longer became feasible. Um, but now we've maybe split the one fence with um, the one neighbor and um, the other neighbors decided to build it inside their property line or inside of the property line rather that goes between our two properties which means it's on his property and is his property so we're not splitting that with him uh he's decided which is okay that's totally fine which leaves the only fence that we don't have is at the back of the property and we have a really unique property because the back faces the side of someone's house. Uh, we chose this because we are in a, a really like tightly packed new development. I'm sure if you're familiar with new developments, I don't know what, at least like in the Edmonton area, they're so packed together. You could reach out and touch your neighbor. But we chose this one specifically because of the back of the property faces the side of someone's house. So it's quite private because their side of the house, which is um, the only window they have on that side are some basement windows and uh, a hallway window, like a stairwell window going upstairs. So they're very, very rarely um, back there or downstairs. So we have quite a lot of privacy given to us by the back or the side of that house. So. We will get a, a fence put up along the back eventually, but it's not, you know, it's not an emergency. I've got quite a bit of privacy 
now going forward with these two sides finished and I'm, I'm so 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 happy one of the biggest reasons is not just privacy but because I love to garden and I want to know I want to get things planted like perennials and things that are going to stay in their homes forever or as long as we own this property and with not having the fence up you know things have to get dug up and disturbed um, and uh, I still want that fence at the back because I want to be able to plant along it and, and finalize the design of my garden but I can do that now for both sides where the fence has been put up and that's going to be enough like I swear to god gardening is so much work especially if it's just you it's so so much work and I think next year if I can just get the two sides settled and, and whatever else I decide to put in that's going to be more than enough and my garden is finally all put to bed I'm not going to say all put to bed I leave a lot of stuff up for insects and birds and stuff to kind of munch on and overwinter in. A lot of it gets cleared up in the spring, but I've cut down the things that need to get cut down. I dug up my dahlias, which are a flower that in cold climates you have to dig up every winter and store them, um, kind of like a potato. They're a tuber. Um, in order to plant them again the next year. They're a really gorgeous flower. Maybe I'll share some pictures of them next year. If I manage to overwinter them successfully, this will be the first year that I am doing that. But anyway, um, so here we go. <laughs> the fruits of our labor. Um, I'm gonna get these put into a box and uh, well, actually, I'm also going to price them. So I put um, a price and a skew on the back of them, which is really helpful for your consignment vendors when it comes to tracking your product. And the easier it is for them, the easier it is for them to give that information to you. But anyway, we're all done. Uh, I hope you enjoyed coming along with some packing today and listening to me, to me uh, go on and on. Um, I hope you're having a really great week and uh, see you in the next one.